In this video, we're going to be getting a little bit closer to deriving the characteristic function for our normal random variable, or our standard normal random variable, I should say. And we're going to build off what we've worked on before. So before we found that the characteristic function for our normal random variable was given by this sort of stuff on the right-hand side. And in particular, this integral here, as it stands, is we're not able to do it because essentially this is an integral which involves i. So we actually need some degree of complex analysis to evaluate this integral. And the way in which I'm going to go about thinking about this second term is we're actually going to make a change of variable. And the change of variable we're going to make is we're going to define a variable s, which is a complex variable, which is equal to x, which is just a, a sort of real variable, minus i t. And if we just sort of change variable, we know that ds is just going to be equal to dx because t is just a parameter. It's, it's constant when we're integrating. So we just got ds equals dx. The only other thing we need to change about this integral are the limits. So the sort of upper limit, s upper, is actually going to be equal to, instead of being equal to infinity, it's going to be infinity minus it because I've sort of taken my x value, infinity, and I've taken off it. Okay, and then the lower bound of the integral is just going to be equal to infinity, or minus infinity rather, minus it. Okay, if we do all that and we just sort of substitute in for s rather than our sort of x, we're going to have that the characteristic function is equal to minus e to the minus t squared over 2 divided by root 2 pi integrated from infinity minus it to minus infinity minus it, or the other way around actually. And we're going to be integrating e to the minus s squared over 2 ds. So this is the integral which we are going to need to evaluate. And the way in which we're actually going to go about evaluating this integral is via use of a rectangular contour integral. Specifically, we're going to think about what it what sort of value we get for an integral if we integrate over these particular contours. So this is just the complex plane, so this is the sort of imaginary part of our variable, this is the real part of our variable, and the contour which we're going to integrate over is going to go from minus alpha to plus alpha, and we're going to sort of integrate along the real axis, then we're going to integrate parallel to the real axis. So it's actually going to be a closed contour integral. And if we evaluate this particular complex contour integral, then it turns out that it's actually going to give us a value for this integral which we're trying to evaluate. But it all hinges on knowing a particular outcome of complex analysis, which is namely that if I integrate any sort of um, function of a complex variable z, dz, then that's actually equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all my residuals. And careful, residuals here doesn't actually mean the sort of residuals which you normally talk about in econometrics. This means something completely different. If a function is completely analytic in the region for which we are integrating, so in this sort of region which we're integrating round, then it turns out that this particular function has no residuals. So we can actually find that the contour integral of that particular function around those contours must be equal to zero if it is a closed contour integral. So that means it's starting and ending at the same place. And we're going to use that fact in order to evaluate this integral here. In the next video, we're going to just sort of think about breaking down this particular contour integral into its various constituent parts and we're going to be a bit closer to deriving the characteristic function of a normal random variable. I'll see you then.